Is it wrong for a man to love a surge suppressing power strip? Society would say yes, but I refuse to be bound by their outdated, narrow minded mores. And so when this one developed problems, the switch light started flickering and then went out, I decided to fix it. This is a great unit. It's, I've had it for decades, since the 90s, I think. It's, it's, it's metal um, and built like a tank, and it has this cool label on it that says, uh, light on, unit is OK, light off, replace unit. Well, I'm not going to replace the unit. Now, a surge suppressing power strip is just a power strip with some electronic components in it called MOVs, metal oxide barristers, to dump any spikes, short spikes, on the order of millionths of a second, 20 microseconds, say, uh, to ground. And, and, and protect the equipment that's, that's plugged into it. Now, you'll run across people uh, on the internet, uh, cranky old guys like me, who'll say that uh, uh, they're worthless, uh, that kind of protection should be built into the equipment, not to worry about it. But uh, um, I still think they're, 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 they're useful and worth having. And besides, I have this one, and as I say, I, I love it. One of the reasons it's, it's built this way with, with metal is uh, the old way they used to wire these up um, some decades ago, when the mob inside uh, fails catastrophically, which it can if it's exposed to a high voltage source for a long time, it, it can actually explode and catch fire. So one of the ways to address that is to put it inside a nice metal box, save it. The new ones are made out of plastic and have a little LED and thermal fuse. And when the uh, mobs inside, which do degrade over time, finally go, um, they blow a thermal fuse and you have to throw them away. This one, because it's old, has a nice uh, 15 amp circuit breaker on it so you can reset it. Um, and uh, it has a thermal fuse in it that, that turns this light off when the, when the MOV actually um, breaks down completely. I noticed as I was looking at the, the label on the back that there is a patent number and I looked that up and um, the, the patent is, is for this, uh, uh, this case with the uh, tabs to stabilize it and the hidden screw holes. It has nothing to do with the electrical stuff. And then the crazy thing is the patent expired today, the same day I'm shooting this. And this is the second time this has happened to me. When I, if you look at my electric blanket video, uh, which you should because it's great, um, uh, the patent for that expired the day I was, was shooting it too, which is, which is nuts. Um, and also, uh, the electric blanket is another good example. It has a MOV built into it. So uh, the people who argue that uh, equipment should have this stuff built in are, are right in that case. The, the electric blanket controller does. So what I did to bring this back was I replaced this switch, which I'll show you because there's some wiring choices to be made around that, which I wasn't aware of when I first put it together and I, and I decided it wasn't the way I wanted it to be. And there are two MOVs in here that I also replaced uh, because they cost like 37 cents and there's no good way to test them under load. And then once you do both those things, and this thing is good to go for uh, another bunch of years, um, they do degrade over time as they take um, hits from uh, electrical spikes, usually lightning in some parts of the country, not out here uh, as much, but, but also inductive loads in your house like an air conditioner or refrigerator motor stop and can shoot a little spike um, down the line. So what I want to do is take you through this schematically very quickly, look at the switch and the wiring options, which confused me at first, and then um, show you the final product with the new MOVs installed and, uh, and how we got, got to here. So before we get into the schematic, let's take a look at this original switch, which was amber, and the bulb inside had burnt out. And uh, you may say to yourself, hey, I could take that switch out, and I could get under there and replace that, that bulb directly and not have to buy a new switch. So why don't we take a look and see how that might go? Trying to pop out this hinge, which seems like a good way to go. Come on. Woohoo! Ah, and so there we are. We got our uh, little, um, what is that called? Is that like a, that's a mini neon bulb, and then there's a, uh, dropping resistor in there. So, you know, I have to look at this under the uh, magnifier, but, uh, um, you know, yes. Could you get another one and solder it in here and maybe put this thing back together? Let's see the springs down in there and everything. Yeah, but, you know, what a... <laughs> and then I got this, this kind of Tinnerman nut thing. And so then, so then it's like, you know, this is a big, <laughs> a big pain. So probably not worth it. But uh, at least we got to see what's inside it, and that looks pretty nasty. So I made this little schematic of the circuitry inside the power strip, 
um, mostly to describe how the, the switch works, but it's also good to kind of just get an overview of how the thing works. There's really not much to it. Uh, this is the plug. So you have your neutral. I run the neutral across the top of the, the diagram. The ground goes right to chassis ground. And then the hot comes in, goes through the 15 amp circuit breaker, and then into our toggle switch, which is this, this square here. Um, these are the two MOVs that uh, protect the line. And, and these guys, uh, uh, at regular voltages, uh, you know, uh, 110, 120, 125, uh, act as, um, uh, uh, they're wide open. They're, 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 it's like they're not even there. But as the voltage um, gets up to around uh, 200 volts with these particular units, which is kind of low for, for one of these things by modern standards, uh, actually it's like 180, they start to conduct. And, um, and then they cascade into conduction and become a dead short, uh, shorting the, the hot line to, to neutral and the hot to, hot to ground. Uh, so you can think of this like a light bulb coming on and it heats up uh, everything, uh, but it takes all the current and, and keeps that voltage and high current away from all the outlets, which are, this is the first outlet and then they, they repeat. So I want to take a moment and focus on this switch because this caused me some mental anguish here. So you have, this is the this toggle switch uh, unit. It's a T85 unit and they're built for a uh, opening of one and an eighth by half an inch, uh, 1.125 inches by 0.5 uh, inches. And they have, they have these double um, retaining clips on each side. That's how you can kind of recognize the, the form. The original one's a Swan 43 series. I couldn't find that, so this is similar. The original one's amber, this one's red. Um, but it comes in a plastic casing of your three terminals, one, two, three, and that's the same as one, two, three here on this. And the, the neutral return for the neon light is a different color. It's copper on this one, and these two are silver. I would reverse that if I were making these, but I guess uh, it's probably slightly cheaper to, to, to make it. So. Um, so this is one, this is one, it goes through the neon light and then to a dropping resistor and is connected to two, the center uh, terminal here. And uh, then when you close the switch, this goes down to three and connects, connects these two. So that's how that works. And, and then the, in the unit, there's a thermal, uh, there's a, a thermal fuse outside uh, so that when these mobs conduct and get real hot, it also heats this up and, um, and eventually when the mobs fry and this heats up, this will open and turn the light off. So when the light's off, you have to ask yourself, did, are the mobs fried or um, did the neon bulb inside the, the switch go bad because they the cathodes crud up in them and they start to flicker and then they go out. And honestly, I think the easiest thing to do in an old unit like this is just replace everything because the as I said, the mobs are cheap and the switch is cheap and, and uh, then you can start over. Every time one of these mobs takes a power hit, it's, um, it's breakdown voltage comes down. So these are only at like 200 volts. So, uh, they're already pretty low by modern standards and, and, uh, uh, a few hits will get you close to line, line voltage and you're not, you know, um, uh, not getting much, uh, protection there. Um, so if you look at this closely, you'll see that the neon light is connected to, to the, the, the center terminal, the, the, the two terminal here. And I didn't really notice this. And when you're designing this product, you have a decision to make. So the, the label says when the light's on, the thing's okay. And when the light's off, uh, the unit needs to be replaced. So should the light be always on when it's plugged in, even if the switch is off? And, and, and I hadn't, um, thought about that, but that that is the way they have wired this. Uh, so as long as this is plugged in, this and and the mobs are okay, this light, the thermal fuse is okay. This light, this light is going to be on. And I didn't realize that. So I went in. Take a look at this. I went in and I started soldering up the 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 new switch. This is the bottom of it, um, exactly the way that. It came from the uh, factory, so I did the neutral return, and then, uh, and then the, and then the other two um, wi wires. I had to get some some new wire for the um, some new number twelve wire to make the jump to the first uh, outlet because I got cut off the old piece a little short. Uh, so I did that, and I finished, and I go, oh boy, I'm happy. And then I flipped it over to look at it and see how well I did, and doggone it. Um, the light was on all the time, even when I flipped the switch. Uh-oh.
Uh-oh. Which I was not expecting. So I thought I did something wrong and broke and broke it. Um, but after I, uh, after I started to think about it and do some more tests, I realized, well, that's what the designers made a choice to, to have the light, um, uh, stay on all the time. I expected it to go on and off with, with the switch, like a, like a modern power switch. Well, this is mine. I would rather have it work the other way. Uh, so, uh, ultimately what I realized was you don't have to wire the switch this way. You can wire it kind of backwards and so that the neon light is um, uh, on the um, uh, on the side that goes to the to the plugs instead of the supply. So essentially, you're you're swapping um, pins two and three. What they what they do. So instead of bringing your supply line in on two, so the light's always on, you bring your supply line in on three, so the light's off when the switch is open, and then when the switch closes, the light comes on. So here's a look at the switch to kind of demonstrate this. I got the suicide cord on and 100. 15 volts coming into this thing off an isolation uh, transformer and you can see I've connected the neutral return in, in terminal 2. Let's turn this off and you see it's on and it stays on no matter how I toggle the switch. So then if we turn off the power and change this over to this side and turn the power back on. Now the switch only comes on when you turn it on. And that's what I wanted. When I opened this thing up, these mobs and the thermal fuse were all kind of wrapped in uh, white, uh, like um, adhesive tape, like cloth adhesive tape from a first aid kit. And that's what's left all this kind of goo on everything. Um, so I kind of pulled all that out. I heated it up a little bit and, and, um, and uh, got it out of there. Fun thing about these outlets, um, instead of just having, um, let's see, let me pick this one here. Instead of just having uh, the two um, pressure um, uh, pinch connectors that an outlet usually has, this has this has an extra one on each uh, um, leg, so you can connect components across the across the line, which is interesting. I don't trust these um, pinch connectors over time; they tend to loosen up. Although these seem pretty good, so I guess um, we're okay. I will kind of poke around and test them a little bit with the multimeter continuity just to make sure everything's kind of firm and not not too goofy there. And here's the final product with the switch wiring reversed from the original. So the hot supply now comes out of the circuit breaker and goes into this leg, which is the, the on leg, and, and the supply to the rest of the strip comes out here. So now the light is only on when the switch is on which I think will work better. Here are the new MOVs in place um, and uh, across the line and the one to ground. And then this is the existing, the old um, thermal fuse going back to the neutral return. And then uh, put a little label in there for future me or whoever to know that someone was in here. And uh, we're good to go. So a lot of you probably already know this trick, but if you have to hang up one of these power strips in the patent pending, case with the hidden screw holes. The easiest way to do it, I found, is to make a paper template. Uh, then you don't have to do a lot of measuring. So that's what I did here. And then I um, taped it to the wall. I It's overkill. I used the laser level because I knew where um, a stud was. I measured 16 inches over and then I used the laser level to bring the line up so I could uh, punch holes in the wall here. And I knew one of them was going to be on a stud and then the other would be a molly. And then you hang it up and plug everything in. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, tell your friends, watch the other videos uh, on this channel, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.